Ha, huh, we got mail. I still have no idea what I'm gonna craft this week, but I'm sure this will help out. I actually should know what's in here, but I have already forgotten what I have read in my messages. Yes, makes things more exciting. Aha! The boxy fix. Okay, so we're gonna pour some water effects today. It will be epic, but certainly not as epic as the Attack on Dragon Shore diorama. Alright, I went ahead and cut myself a nice, hopefully sturdy base from hardboard. I made this specifically into a corner so that it fits well on the game table without feeling awkward. That's good. So what do we want on this terrain? Something that looks like a portion of a city, water channels, a dark house and bridges. Sure, we can do that. I started drawing, the dotted line represents the channel. Here there will be a pond of sorts that has less man-made structures around it. Lots of cobblestones, a house and bridges. Makes exactly as little sense as it looks like. Anyway, I grabbed my phone to start working on the stonework and cobblestone streets surrounding the channel. At first I was about to cut pieces that are as thick as the banks of the channels will be, but I realized I could just use a large chunk and later remove the excess. So I started cutting. Doing this with a kitchen knife is just dumb enough for my taste. I don't have to pay for extra tools, even if that would be fun. Here I made sure to cut the outer sides nice and flat, because I'll make the stone textures directly on this surface. However, this curved inner side doesn't matter yet. I might glue on stone textured strips there later, so that the rough cut of the saw doesn't matter. Did you know you can actually make decent textures just by saw? Okay, just the curves by saw. I got the rest using the knife. See here, this surface will have to be covered with a strip of foam later, while the rest is ready for texturing right now. However, before any texturing, I cut the channel section away. One more thing, the XPS foam has this glossy factory surface which is best cut away. It takes paint and textures poorly. Good, I continued by making the stonework on the vertical surface. These bricks don't have to be that uniform, so doing this by hand, just using the exacto knife, works fine. Once I had cut the bricks, I used aluminum foil to apply stone textures. I did this before working the cuts I just made. In this way, the foil ball texturing process won't flatten the grooves between the bricks. The grooves are made afterwards using any pointy object. Here I'm using a barbecue stick that I carved into optimal shape. Okay, all done. I textured all sides except the back. It will be just black. For extra detail, I also quickly carved in a few cracks here and there. Now I also knew what to do with this. I didn't like the idea of gluing a strip of textured foam over this, so instead I decided to cut stairs down here. Cutting stairs into foam is easy. Okay, now that the curved surface was much smaller, I was able to cut it somewhat smooth with the curved portion of the blade. That's good enough, I can now continue with the textures. I quickly carved and textured the bricks as I did before. I also made bricks on the front side of the stairs. Now this does look very good, but I was not quite sure what to do next. To find some inspiration for the build, I went inside and opened the computer, but I felt that something was off. 
brothers, we must stay safe, we never know when they are watching. Our masters are pulling the strings and they would like to know exactly what you're doing. This brings us to the sponsor of this video, Surfshark. Okay, I have found my inspiration, mainly from this image. I also figured out how to make the stonework on the top. Yeah, so first I finish the vertical stones all the way up to the horizontal surface. In this way I got a nice border around the cobblestone areas. Now the borders are done, I continued by making irregular roundish stones on the rest of the surfaces. Hmm, this seemed to not work that well with the exacto knife. Instead I tried making the stonework by gently working with the pen. That worked much better. Here you have to be careful not to tear the foam. With some other brands of XPS foam, you might not even be able to do this without tearing it horribly. Now this did take some time and was rather tedious. However, the results are worth it. Here I marked a spot for the house. As you can see, I left some areas unpaved. These will be areas around the house that are covered in dirt and perhaps some grass. Okay, I applied the usual aluminum foil textures, then glued the pieces on the base. Next is bridge number one. I was able to cut a quite good curved piece of foam for the bridge. Not perfect at first, so I had to make some adjustments. After a while I had a nice piece for the bridge. This doesn't have to make too much sense, I just made sure it fits well enough before making the stonework and such. I kept this very simple, some larger stones on the sides, textures and the cobblestones in the middle. I then glued the bridge on with the help of some sticks. Okay, that still looks a bit off. Some stone support pillars should fix that. I made myself these little stone pillars, then glued them under the bridge. Yeah, I think we pulled that off quite nicely. Next, the second bridge shall be built here. It will be collapsed. My plan was the following. First make the necessary pieces, glue some on, and then break the bridge. Good. I also made some individual bricks and placed them into the water. Okay, I was very happy with that. Remember, with enough low quality details, your terrain will look high quality. That's the most important thing, after all. For the next step we'll use popsicle sticks and barbecue sticks. First I'll finish this ruined bridge using textured popsicle sticks. These can be textured with the utility knife like this. These deep cuts and cracks are a good way to add contrast to your terrain. Alright, these are perfect for building a junk walkway over the broken bridge. This one looks like it's built by ratmen or goblins, you decide. Using the rest of the sticks I have textured, I built a small wooden platform. Hopefully I'll manage to glue this on nicely using these textured barbecue stick poles. With some super glue I was able to glue the platforms here without causing too much of a mess. I, I'm lying, there was actually quite a mess. Very tricky but certainly worth the effort. All 
all right time to build the house. Let's keep it really simple because I kind of don't want to do it anymore. I really like this how it is already. However, I said there shall be a house, so it's best to just do it. Okay, so the back of the building will be cropped away from the diorama, just as this side as well. Once I had the main block shaped, I cut room for some planks, while leaving the bottom part like that. This bottom or foundation will be stonework, so I made the textures just as before. Yeah, that looks good. I glued on the house along with these cute little stairs. Hmm, I don't know why I stressed about the house. This is very easy to do. Next up we have the planks. I made sure to cut them into the right length so that the roof is easily glued on later. One tip for getting motivated for the hobby is to stop doing what you feel like. If you're like the standard YouTube addict, you probably have great plans for stuff you want to do, but uh, when the time to take action is at hand, you quickly run out of motivation and stop trying. Try ignoring motivation and work on your discipline. Discipline will get you far in all aspects of life, and you'll often find true motivation in seeing what beauty you have created. Just something to think about. Okay, here I had a pretty good idea. I made the door from the end of a popsicle stick. Instead of breaking the piece into individual planks, I carved in deep grooves to give the illusion of separate planks. Easy does it, we don't want the wood to crack. Great, on goes the door. I also cut a small excuse of a door handle from a barbecue stick. Okay, in order to make the roof, I first had to cut a simple wedge shape from XPS foam. Over this, it will be easier to glue on the shingles, which hopefully will be only a few. Uh, not a perfect cut, even on the second attempt. I glued the pieces on anyway. I can cover up for sure. I covered the remaining walls with planks going the other way. Good, now let's make the roof. For the shingles, I'll naturally use cardstock. I have so much stockpiled oats that there will never be a shortage of crafting materials or food. Anyway, I cut these rectangular bits that vary in size and shape. I glued the shingles onto the room in a very messy manner. Doesn't matter if it leaks, because nobody's living in this house. I also let the shingles overlap the back edge. The excess can be cut away later. While I waited for the glue to dry, I cut myself a bunch of sticks. These I then used to make railings on some places of the diorama. I poked in the sticks and left some of them slightly crooked. I didn't make too much railings, that should be just enough. Then for good measure I also glued on some hemp rope. Again, super glue plus activator does the trick. To get rid of the flimsy bits that are coming out of the thread, I rubbed some PVA glue between my fingers and worked the hemp rope into one sturdy bit. Okay, looks good, now I was able to cut the excess shingles. Everything seemed nice and sturdy, so I started painting the whole thing with black. Priming or basing by brush is slower than using sprays, but it's cheaper and you can do it inside. Here it is important to carefully get paint into every crack and groove. Okay, I let it sit for about an hour. After drying, this was a very good matte black. I continued by overbrushing the vertical stonework with grey. As you can see, all of this painting is quite sloppy. It doesn't matter if we get some on unwanted surfaces. This is a dirty old town, after all. Nobody will notice. Okay. 
I know brown goes well with grey, so I overbrushed all horizontal stone surfaces with this burnt umber. To get some variance you can apply this paint unevenly over the ground. Next we have a light grey dry brush. This goes quite heavily on the vertical grey stonework. And gently on the brown stonework. Hey, a quick announcement here. I'm selling terrain to fund my own real workshop. This one will also be for sale. Check out the website. Okay, to try something completely new for me, I mixed a dark red. I smudged it around some areas and liked it. Seems to work. With the dark red smudge paint I was able to add a hint of color while darkening some places I had dry brushed too vigorously. Okay, next I dry brushed the wood with a brown. Normally I'd paint the wood with brighter colors, but for this diorama I want a darker theme. I further aged the wood by dry brushing with a tan. I applied this over all planks but focus mostly on the middle of the planks or anywhere where the wood should be more worn. Here's a beautiful demonstration. Yeah, then I tried brushing over the roof to see what happens. I liked the results and painted the entire roof using the same tan. For the next step I got some sand off the yard. I applied the sand using watered down PVA glue. For this I only used the finest sand I could find, unlike I have done in some other projects where the grains are way too large. Also quite conveniently I was able to cover some gaps between the bridge and pavement by sprinkling on some sand. Other than that I applied patches of sand on a few areas of the diorama. I let the glue dry and mixed an oil wash. White spirit plus oil paints. Simple. First I made a really dark brown wash. I tried it and it seemed too dark so I thinned it down with some more spirit. Now it's better. Using the wash I was able to darken the sand areas. Also I darkened some general areas and added the wash on the house to represent damp or rotten areas. Alright, next I mixed a greenish brown oil wash. This I smudged around a bit everywhere. The green adds a good subtle amount of color to this piece. I mostly applied it near the water and on the wood. Okay, the oil paints will have to dry for a while, so painting the water is the next obvious step. I covered the channels with this greenish brown, which I managed to mix from the cheap acrylic paints I had at hand. Here it is important to get a smooth full coverage. I did that by making brush strokes in just one direction where possible, and by applying several layers of paint. Thinning the paint appropriately also helps considerably. After the paint had almost dried, I covered the channels one last time with a much more diluted layer. Here you can use a hairdryer to save some time. Good to prepare for the resin pour, I taped the sides. The tape doesn't want to stick to the painted surface, but we'll hope for the best. I carefully measured the epoxy. Two parts of the resin and one part of hardener. Probably got the terms wrong. Well, I mixed the resin thoroughly and for a while I consider adding a bit of greenish paint. I was not sure how acrylics work with resin so I refrained from doing that. Then I used a syringe in hopes of minimizing air bubbles. 
I'm no expert, but I've seen people utilizing thin streams of resin to avoid air bubbles. Everything went as planned, the resin poured into crevices by itself and became perfectly flat. I just enjoyed the process. Great, next I experimented by mixing acrylic paints into the resin. The idea was to apply this brighter color at the borders of the water. But that didn't work for that purpose. The damned specks of colors were visible in the resin. Doesn't this look like algae, I thought. Although this was not the intended purpose, I was quite happy with the algae. I applied more and then mixed around slightly. Nice, I was able to create swirly collections of algae or seaweed, whatever it resembles the most. Then from the same source I found my inspiration for this build, I also got the idea of miniature leaves. Outside I found a bunch of these tiny seed thingies that fall off trees. They are perfect as miniature leaves. I scattered them all over the still sticky water surface. The epic wargaming table by Ludban's miniature got me real inspired and I'm happy to show you how to make something similar on a lower budget. No 3D printer, no airbrush. Yeah, then I also went ahead and glued a few leaves on the pavement. Lastly, I applied just a bit of homemade hemp grass flocking. This seems like too much now, and the color is too bright. I'll have to fix that later. Okay, rookie mistakes, don't flock before the resin has cured. Well, I learned my lesson. After picking away the flock, I covered the ugly spots with more leaves. Then, once the flocking had dried into place, I applied this brown wash to darken it slightly. Okay, I then removed the tape as carefully as I could. Looks like some paint came off, but just a bit, no problem. Afterwards, I was easily able to clean up everything. Welcome to Old Town. Here giant rats rule the streets at night. If you manage to stay sane until the break of dawn, you'll enjoy the ever-putrid smell of sewage. You can thank the nobles in Hightown for that. Ever since that high Alfred built that supposedly great sewer systems for the higher folk up there, we, the wretched lower class, have suffered from giant rat infestations. What say you, adventurers? Ready to kill some rats? Stories by some old man. Yeah, you can use that as a level 1 campaign starter. Good luck. Hope you have liked the video, subscribe and like if you did, and watch another build while you're at it. And remember, get the Surfshark VPN and buy my stuff. <laughs> you can support me on Patreon if you appreciate the content. Thank you very much.